Hey everybody, Philippe from Plant With Purpose here, and we are going through the top most encouraging environment news stories of the past year. So it's the start of a new year, start of a new decade, and I am being very much reminded of how urgently we need to get things together when it comes to taking care of our planet. I don't want to take anything away from that urgency, but I also think it's really important to stay tuned into what's going right. I mean, it's really hard to stay motivated if it feels like you're only hearing about crises and, and what's going wrong. Uh, so in the interest of balance, here are some positive, encouraging things that we learned about last year. Let's take it month by month. So in January, we learned that job growth in renewable energy outpaced that of job growth in fossil fuel industries. Uh, this was the first time that happened, but this was based on a study taken across over 50 major U.S. cities, and that trend was very consistent throughout each of them. Hiring was strong last month. Employers added 209,000 jobs. More and more jobs are being generated by green energy. And what's amazing is as those industries have gotten bigger, the cost of that energy has gotten cheaper. That also means that the demand has increased, making it much more reflective of a wider shift towards renewable energy. In February, a photographer spotted a black leopard, AKA an actual black panther. The leopard was found in Kenya. And what's amazing is this is the first documented sighting in pretty much exactly a century. The last time anyone had a fully recorded sighting of a black leopard was in 1909. Wildlife photographer Will Berard Lucas captured photos of the animal which he shared on his website. There have been many who thought that the creature might have gone extinct in that time. I mean, that is a long time to go without seeing a certain species. There have been rumored sightings of black leopards in various parts of Eastern Africa, but now it's confirmed the black leopard, aka a black panther, is still alive and out there. In March, we learned how important women's empowerment was to the cause of fighting deforestation. Women's empowerment is a big deal when it comes to environmental issues. It's something that we've focused on at Plant With Purpose for a long time. In fact, two thirds of our participants are female. So researchers at the University of Colorado made this connection even stronger. They looked at groups meant to empower women in Indonesia, Peru, and Tanzania. What they found was over half of the women that have been economically empowered cut the amount of trees that they deforested significantly. We believe that rural women are the front lines of fighting climate change, and this has been a great study to give evidence to that. Speaking of fighting climate change, in April, we got a new roadmap outlining a detailed strategic plan how to do so. A study from LUT University in Finland revealed a plan from keeping the Earth's temperature increase from exceeding 1.5. The study outlined a unique international study for investing further into renewable energy, solar, wind, bioenergy. One of the most encouraging findings from the study was that shifting to renewable energy like this isn't just feasible, it's actually economically beneficial in the long run. In May, England committed to planting 130,000 trees. Okay, that number might not seem like the biggest, especially when you hear some of the commitments other countries have made, but these trees are going to be planted in mostly urban, densely populated areas. Well, the great thing about our project is it's got many, many Londoners, thousands of Londoners involved in helping us plant these trees. Tens of thousands have uh, applied for our trees. We're planting saplings in their gardens and other green spaces, but also you have mass tree planting projects as well. So why is this a big deal? In urban areas, trees are still highly connected to cooler temperatures and cleaner air. In fact, this makes a big deal of difference in the quality of life people experience based on where they live. Another study this year found that trees are highly connected to heat levels in inner cities, and those heat levels have a strong correlation with the poorest parts of different metro areas. Uh, England has recently experienced one of its hottest temperatures on record, so bringing temperatures in cities down will be important to sparing the lives of elderly, sick, and vulnerable populations. Speaking of trees, there was a study in July that revealed just how beneficial trees are to outcomes in human health. A study revealed that even two hours a week spent around nature was enough for better health outcomes. That's the headline of a recent study on the effects of living near green spaces. Of the people who spent less than two hours a week, a quarter of them experienced poor health results within the past year. 
Uh, if you compare that to people who spent over two hours around nature and around trees, only 14% of them experienced that same. That's a 10% decrease. This study, which came from England, joined one from earlier in the year from Denmark, which found that children exposed to plenty of nature scored much higher mental health outcomes. So in July, we saw a lot of communities, a lot of cities, and entire countries rally around tree planting. This is probably the most true in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has made its mark in the record books by planting over 350 million trees in a single day. The name of the initiative, Green Legacy. The total number of seedlings planned for planting, 4 billion. And so far, Ethiopia has managed to plant more than 3 billion of them in less than six months time. About a century ago, 35% of Ethiopia would have been covered by forests. But in the year 2000, that number had dwindled down to 5%. Uh, restoring the forests and the natural tree cover of Ethiopia is vital to fighting food insecurity. August, on the other hand, was actually a difficult month for many of the world's forests. Uh, you'll remember that that was the month that much of the Amazon rainforest caught on fire. The Amazon is one of the Earth's three largest rainforests, but there was good news happening in another one of them. For years, trees in the Indonesian rainforest have been highly extracted, mostly because they can be used to produce palm oil, and there's a significant demand for that around the world. The palm oil industry has quickly become Indonesia's main foreign currency earner. But the deforestation also fuels devastating wildfires. This has caused Indonesia to become one of the world's worst emitters of greenhouse gases. In August, however, the government of Indonesia announced that they would indefinitely extend a ban on new forest clearance in Indonesia. That means that for the time being, there are no plans to further deforestation into the Indonesian rainforest. In September, the UNEP announced that the hole in the ozone layer is closing uh, and is on track to be closed very, very soon. A shift in weather patterns at the bottom of the planet has helped to shrink the hole in the ozone layer to its smallest size since its discovery. The ozone hole was discovered in 1985, and by 1988, every world leader understood the dire situation and signed the Montreal Protocol. And more than 30 years after that binding international treaty was signed, it still plays a vital role in the climate conversation. I think this is very good news, especially if you've been concerned about people's inability to work together to solve these global level problems. It can happen. It's happened in the past, and hopefully it happens even faster and more robustly this time around. All right, you still with me? Three more months. In October, we saw a kind of surprising squad rally to plant 20 million trees around the world. YouTubers. Do you want to help change the world, save the planet, help the environment, and just make life good? Of course you do. You're big brain. Bro, what do you want the planet to die? Come on. Grow. Do you, do you see the sky? Uh, it's so going to be a house for it. birds I'm and stuff. Well, you may have heard about the Team Trees collab headed by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober, which aims to plant 20 million trees by raising money through the Arbor Day Foundation. Okay, so maybe it's not that surprising. There are a lot of great resources for learning about tree planting and environmental issues on YouTube, uh, but it was still great. Using the hashtag, using the hashtag Team Trees, uh, various YouTube influencers were able to rally $20 million of donations, resulting in that many trees being planted around the world. A month later, in November, the European Union declared a climate emergency. The vote is closed. And the resolution is adopted. How is an emergency good news? Okay, the emergency itself is not good news, but the declaration and the commitments that get made after something has been declared an emergency are. New EU Commission President von der Leyen says she will make the EU the world's first climate-neutral continent by 2050 and prepare a law to make it irreversible. Across Europe, various countries committed to reduce carbon emissions by 55% within the next 10 years. At the same time, the European Investment Bank decided to divest from coal. This shift is followed by a number of commitments made by individual countries, including Germany, France, and Italy, to lower their carbon emissions through various means. And that brings us to December, and here is something honestly kind of bizarre, but really interesting that happened at the Great Barrier Reef. 
Scientists have figured out how to bring fish back to dead parts of the Great Barrier Reef using speakers that imitate the sounds of living coral. Living coral creates a lot of ocean noise, uh, and dead coral doesn't. You know, one of the saddest happenings of the past decade has been the destruction of large swaths of the Great Barrier Reef. But if sound can bring back many of these fish species, it greatly increases the chance of restoring degraded coral areas. Vast areas of the reef have been devastated in recent years, with little sign or sound of life. However, this new technique works by regenerating the sounds that are lost when reefs are quietened by degradation. We did an experiment where we used underwater loudspeakers to make quiet, degraded patches of coral rubble sound like they were healthy reefs. And when we did, we attracted twice as many fish. The hope is the gathering fish go on to clean the reef, making space for coral to grow and restoring life over time. All right, as January through December 2019 in environmental good news. Did you have a favorite? Did I miss any? These are all really positive and encouraging stories. They're not meant to take away from the urgency of things that still need to happen. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to do something good for the planet right now, head over to plantwithpurpose.org. You can donate to plant trees around the world. It only costs a dollar per tree, and that tree gets planted in a rural community that really needs reforestation and the help that it provides. Let's go out there and let's go make some 2020 headlines.